Hi, this is Freddie News Review, the podcast. And now, America's independent voice, Rob Reddy. Rob Reddy. <laughs> now, every Tuesday, it's live according to Dr. Lewis Gordon. Dr. Lewis Gordon, Connecticut's own, is with us. Hello, sir. How are you? Doing fine, Rob. How you doing? Great, great. What are we talking about today? Talking about shame. Shame, Let's do it. shame, shame. I'm talking about shame. It is impossible to think of the word without immediately thinking back on oneself. You know, one feels ashamed, one suffers shame. Shame is the objective realization of the negative side of self. It is seeing one's dirty laundry in public. Through the eyes of others, one sees oneself there, naked. And we're not liking what we see. We either turn our head low or stand defiantly denying the truth that stands before us. Racism, as we know, is one of the things about which America is ashamed. The shame, however, comes from it also being such a deeply rooted part of the national character. In other words, this is a country founded on racism and slavery. Sadly, America without racism doesn't sound like America at all. Yet we know there's a good side to the nation, but the fact remains that much of the nation's foundations we're about this. We're about racism and slavery. Now, a very ugly side of so many people emerged after the Zimmerman, or rather Martin, Trayvon Martin trial last week. That is because, quite simply, there was a shameful verdict of not guilty. The thing about shame, as the cultural critic Sarah Ahmed observes, is that one suffers harm from shame. To get rid of it, one seeks recovery. But that often takes the form of covering over what has happened. To recover often means to return to what one was. But for us to return means to affirm the racist conditions that led not only to what happened to Trayvon Martin, but also the countless instances that maintain a system of apartheid and, for many, continued enslavement. I mean, who would want to return to what for, well, for people perhaps like Zimmerman would be the good old days? The investment in covering over what happened has taken many mean, brutal forms. Faculties of reasoning are thrown to the wayside. People's critical judgment are suspended. For instance, the discussion of burglaries in the gated community of Florida, where the killing took place, is advanced with, with the presumption that the burglars had to be black. That is one of the problems in the way we talk about crime in America. We always presume it has to be black. Yet, to my knowledge, burglars come in all shades, and white burglars are often able to get away with their crime in plain sight because no one presumes they're burglars. It's the same for shoplifting. Blacks are followed in department stores, supermarkets, and convenience stores, yet shoplifting continues to be in the billions. Now, why is this so? Perhaps it's because there are whites stealing the goods while security guards keep their eyes on black customers. Beyond property, there are violent offenses committed each year in places where black people don't visit, much less live. Yet the face of violence continues to be black. I can go on. The national shame is that racism is ashamed of itself. This leads to the contradiction of continuing through denial. We're in an odd period after last week's trial. Many are laying bare their investments in many other issues. I've even read a white commentary that compared blacks not getting the death penalty as equivalent to Zimmerman's acquittal. We imagine that the presumption is that what is right is for blacks to be executed. Now, how bizarre is this indeed? So much to evade, so much to deny. But perhaps some progress could be achieved if covering over is abandoned. Perhaps more could be learned if placed in the open. Perhaps the greatest shame is the paradox of shame itself, the shame of shame. It is time to get over the shame and stop covering over reality with a myth, mythic, pristine pack. It is time to start dealing with the brutal present, take action, and lay the foundations for what could be, and thus what might be, a better tomorrow. Well said, Dr. Lewis Gordon. How can folks find you? at lewisrgordon.com, that's L-E-W-I-S, rgordon.com. <laughs>
You've been listening to Ready News Review, the podcast with America's independent voice, Rob Ready, presented by Ready Communications Incorporated. For all the pressing news you need to know, log on to www.readynewsreview.com.